kind of in this service today. There's been a lot of death coming and going. But Father, we know that you are in the midst of everything that we're doing. Yes, Lord. So Father, continue to strengthen us. Yes. Continue yes. to strengthen us in this service so that we can celebrate you as well as the fathers on earth. Yes. Father, we know that the fathers that have left, they have been promoted. They have moved forward. They are with you now. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for the time that we spent with them. We thank you for all the, the lessons that they taught us. We thank you for their presence. We thank you for their smile. We thank you for all that they have done. Father, we thank you. We thank you for allowing them to be in our presence. So Father, as we go forth in this service today, Father, let this, this service turn from a waiting experience into a lively experience. A experience where we worship you in spirit and in truth. A, 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 a place where we can honor you. A place where we can, can continue to uplift your name in the way that you would have us to uplift your name. So Father, we just want to say thank you. We just want to thank, say thank you for every man on this charge. Every man in this service. Every man in this community. Every man that's in this city. Every man that's in this state. And every man that is in this country. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. On this day, Father, let them be celebrated in a way that you would have them to be celebrated. Father, I know that there's something new that you're doing in the family, so we just want to thank you for it. We want to continue to, to do the things that we're called to do. Yes. And Father, touch this pastor. Give him, Father, the blessing. I know that there's his, his, his weight is on him right now for him to do what he got to do, but give him, Father. Did him like you never did him before, Father. Father, because we know he's a man of God and he's going to bring the word that you want him to bring for the house today. Father, I know that there are other family members out here. I don't want to leave anyone out of my voice. I want to make sure that I'm doing what I'm assigned to do today is to pray for those that need to be prayed for. So if there are anyone in here, Father, that, that needs prayer right now, Father, I lift them up in your name right now. I lift them up in the way that only you would have me to lift them up. Because, Father, I know that you can do all things. All things. All things but fail. So, Father, we lift you up yes, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We give you the honor and we give you the glory. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory. Yes, Amen. Amen.
street of the road during a cold weather day. And he saw a snake lying on the side of the road, barely alive, almost frozen to death. And the man picked up the snake and put the snake under his jacket and he continued to walk. And as he walked, the snake began to get warm and it started to dry out. And then the snake started feeling good. And the snake bit the man. And the man said to the snake, I can't believe you bit me. After all I did for you, you were lying on the road, almost dead. I picked you up, I brought you back to life, and you bit me. Anybody know what the snake said? No, I was a snake before you picked me up. <laughs> okay? Now, I'm telling you They tell me there were two little boys in the neighborhood, and they were pretty bad when they got together. One was actually who did in more trouble than the other. And as they were walking, they found a little bird, not able to fly, had been hurt. And so they picked the little bird up, and one asked them, what should we do with this little bird? And they said, there's a man that lives on the hill, and they said, he knows everything. Let's ask him what we shall do with this bird. And so as they were walking there, the little one that's got a little more uh, spirit in him said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the bird behind my back and I'm going to hold it in my hand, and I'm going to ask the old man, what is it that I have in my hand? And then if he guesses what it is, then I'm going to ask him, is the bird alive or is the bird dead? So as they went up the driveway to the old man's house, they got there and they called and the old man came out, and he, the little fellow with the bird behind his back said, what is it that I have behind my back. <coughs> and the old man said, it's a bird, my child. And so the little fellow thinking, said, you know, if I ask him if the bird is dead, and he, and, uh, and he said, if he says the bird is dead, I will show him that the bird is alive. But if, I, if he says that the bird is alive, I will suffocate the bird and show him that the bird is dead. So when he asked the old man, he said, now, is the bird alive? Or is the bird dead? And the old man said, my son, the bird is in your hand. You will decide whether he's alive or if he's dead. Now, why did I tell you a little, little parable? I told you that because, if I can find it on my phone, you know that I didn't do that. <laughs> there was, how many of you heard of Ten Commandments? Okay. And one of those commandments says, No, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's in Exodus. Well, there's a second commandment that says, You shall not make for yourself any graven image, or as they call car image, which is false God. <coughs> you shall not take the name of the Lord thy God, man, in vain. You've heard all those before, right? Okay, but there's still some more. Remember the Sabbath to keep it whole. That's what we did today. Honor your father and your mother, that the day can be long upon the land which the Lord thy God did. That is the one that I really want to stop at. On Father's Day, honor your father and your mother, that the day can be long upon the land which the Lord thy God did. It. When you get to your Bibles and you read it, what you will find is that in the Ten Commandments, they are very powerful tools when you live by. But there's only one command that will give you the consequences of your behavior. It says, thou should not steal. And it does not say, thou should not steal, or else you will go to jail. This is, thou should not steal, thou should not kill. But in the one that says, honor your mother and your father, it, it is told to you in advance what will happen when you honor your mother and your father. Your days may be long upon the land. 
Spirit of the Lord and God uh, yes, yes. Now, how many of you honor your mother and your father? I should see all the hands going up. Okay. Now, for those of you who did not raise your hand, God loves people who tell the truth too. And so, but it does give you an opportunity to correct that which you have not been doing. And in the, the times you have missed it, when you ask God for forgiveness, He will go ahead and seal forgetfulness and He'll never bring it up again. And you don't have to remember it again. You just remember where you are and move forward. A uh, couple of things I want to share with you about those little, little parables, too. If you notice one was the person picked up a snake and moved the snake before we picked them up. The other was the little fellow who were going to do damage to the bird. So what God is saying to us is that you have a mind of your own to make your decisions, to make the right decisions. Don't be led by the decision of somebody else if you know it's the wrong decision. Sometimes we get in our groups and we know what the right thing is, but the group's doing wrong, so we are too embarrassed or we are too shy to go in the right direction because we think they'll laugh at us or they'll ostracize us or put us out of the group because we are not going in their direction. But if you don't remember anything else I say, I would like for you to remember there is nothing wrong with doing right. Amen. Amen. Oh. <laughs>